so frugal and I'm a cheap cheapo, cheap wad, tight wad. It's a, if it's just me, he'll stay in business. He'll be fine charging his pieces at his price. But if my belief is legitimate and other people will probably have that same belief and eventually he'll have to lower his prices to sell his pizzas. That's how the market works. You don't need a third party coming in saying your prices are too high. What do you know, Theodore Roosevelt? If I think the part, the pizza guy and the customer, that's who decides. The pizza guy who makes the pizzas and me, the guy that loves to buy pizzas. We work it out between us. If I say your price is too high, I don't buy it. And if enough of me are around, eventually you'll lower the price. And if I think the pizza's good, then I'll pay more. And that's how it works out. That's how the prices are determined. Why, what I'm willing to pay, what I'm not willing to pay, and we figure it out between us. I don't need the government to come in and say, $5 pizzas. Now, I know you're saying, no, that would be cool, man. If the government came out as a third party and said, all the pizza places have to charge $5. All right, let that play out. So if all the pizza places have to charge $5, they have to make some changes if they're going to be able to sell pizzas for $5. Do you think they're going to have fresh ingredients? Do you think they're going to be able to spend time making sure that their restaurant is clean? Do you think they're going to be able to spend time hiring enough employees? They're going to be overworked. Their employees are going to get paid less. There's probably going to be less sanitary measures. They're not going to be able to clean very often. It's not going to be very fresh. Guess what? You get what you pay for and you pay for what you get. We don't want a $5 pizza. We don't need the government to get involved in this. I don't, did, I, did, did, we, did I disparage Teddy Roosevelt enough? A guy who was very unsuccessful then is going to tell businesses what they can do and what's fair or not. Sure. He also gets involved in the anthracite coal strike. And this is, again, this one's kind of interesting. You're going to see here, like, wait a second. There's the boss. And that looks like the worker. And it looks like the worker is winning. But wait a second. These guys are frowning. And I told you about the frowns. I can't find pictures of union workers happy. Let me quickly draw some smiles on these guys' face because this is one where the workers win. Uh-oh, who is that guy? Oh, that's Teddy Roosevelt. And then this represents the coal strike and he's shutting it down and it's like a monster and he's beating the monster. Roosevelt's biggest game. Well, it's not really a monster because remember he's a hunter. He, they have to play off this. The political cartoons are always playing off of his history and who he is. Well, actually, here we go. This guy kind of looks like he's smiling a little bit. And this is one where Teddy Roosevelt gets involved. Now in the past, remember the presidents who were not progressives, who were not looking for fair practice, who were not fighting for consumers and laborers. The boss always won. Remember the boss always won. Now you've got the mine owners, they get locked out. And what ends up happening is the workers get a 10% raise what thank you ted thank you ted and then what else do they get a nine hour work day which is less you're like oh that's a lot well that's actually net less than what they were working before so that's also a win so the president sides with the strikers he's on team labor and helps them out so you got to be excited about that right that's great that's awesome a president fighting for the people sounds like a populist more than a pre than a progressive. Well, it's, it's a little bit of the same. Now, the only thing I want to say about that is, again, this is a third party. Why should the government determine what your wages are? Now, I understand the, the hourly rate. That kind of makes sense. I get that. But the fact that the government said, nope, these guys get a wage increase. I don't know. I don't know. We'll talk more about that in a second. Again, Mr. Roosevelt is going to get involved. So he says no unfair. There's that fair word again. Rates. We've talked about this since video one where the railroads, if you control the railroads, if these are your railroads, then you determine the price. It's your railroad. It's not a public road. If you want to get in my railroad car and get on my railroad track, then you got to pay my price. Well, the government, and that's between the railroad owner and the passenger. And if I think the price is too high, then I don't ride. No ridey. I'll put ridey. That's how it works. It's between 
him and him. But here we go again. The government, and this is a progressive policy then, and it is a very much what the progressives believe now, that big government, big government, is going to get involved and save the day and be the third party negotiator and determine what is F to the A to the I to the R. They're going to determine the price instead of letting the market decide is the price too high or is the price too low? No, the government is going to set their own rates. So one side, sure, progressives would say this is great that we finally have a government that is looking out for the people. And that is true because it did seem like in our previous videos where the government was always helping out the fat cats, always determining who they were. Now it's switching over and the government is helping out the people. That's fine. But that was never the problem if you're really paying attention. The problem was not that the government was always siding with the rich guys. That was not the problem. Although a lot of people perceive it as, oh, it's not fair. The government's always choosing these guys. The problem is the government is choosing. The government should not be involved. Stay out of it. If the prices are too high, then we need to build more railroads. That's what we need. And as you create a higher supply of railroads, the price will drop. Let the market determine. And if no one wants to ride, the demand will drop. And when demand drops, price drops. You can't even read anything on this crazy screen anymore. Yes, if demand goes down, then price goes down. If people refuse to ride, no righty, then he's got to lower his prices. Let the market decide. The government should not pick the winners and losers. When most people study the, the Gilded Age and this era of robin bears, they're always, because of the fact that we call it the robber barons and we call it the Gilded Age, we get this false belief. There's just a, it's a major fallacy to say that, well, the problem is the government always sided with this guy. Well, now you've got the government siding with the people. So all the problems are going to be gone. You'd be crazy to think that this is going to solve all the problems. The problem is not the problem. This is not a problem. The prices are not the problem. The prices are not the problem. I'll say it again. The price is not the problem. We can work that out. You know what the problem is? It's the government. This is not what they need to do. They do not need to be involved in this one. Sit this one out, government. Losing, so he loses. All right, well, great. Let me show you some more in-depth examples of these issues. As always, I have a firm belief, and you should have a firm belief, whether you, rather, I mean, I understand that some people just deep down, instinctively, they, they have their beliefs of what should be and what they want. And just because you wish something doesn't mean it will be so. And just because you want something to be so doesn't make it happen. That, that your desires and your dreams, it's great to have those, but that does not make them a reality. And instinctively, you may believe in something that's right or wrong, but I need you to also realize there are scientific facts. There are laws. Things that it doesn't matter whether you believe in them or not, and whether you think that they're right or wrong, they are always going to exist and you need to accept them. And they are that when demand goes up, meaning when people really want something really bad, that price will go up. And you have seen that. If tomorrow they release a 3D, or uh, what's that movie, Ready Player One in the book or whatever, if they release a virtual reality system where it is pretty much real and you are living in another life, the demand for that will be ridiculous and the price for that will be ridiculous. And that's still true today. If you want to buy one of those uh, virtual reality headsets like Oculus Rift, and I have no idea how to spell it. I'm going to guess it's Oculus Rift. The demand for those is still pretty high. It is living another world. And so the price is high. Now, meanwhile, the demand for things goes down. No one wants a fidget spinner. Don't care about them anymore. And that's why, as I mentioned in the video before, you can get them for next to nothing. You get them in the 25 cent machine in the grocery store. 
supply, another law that you cannot run from. When the supply of something is low, the price is up. The easiest one to remember is the G to the O to the L to the D, gold. Not a lot of gold in this world, it is very valuable. There are plenty of other rare metals. There are plenty of other things that are super rare that become very expensive. Whatever it is in your mind, if it's some sort of specific shoe that helps you understand, if it's gold, whatever. And then when supply of something is really high, its price goes down. Uh, remember silly bands? Remember those things? Even when they were still kind of popular and the demand was still kind of high, their price was pretty low because the supply you could get, they just came in a bunch of bags because it was literally just a piece of rubber. It was a little rubber band and the supply of them was really high and you get them for almost nothing. Now this is what the progressives want. They want to take these laws that I say that you have to agree and live by and they say, nah, government determines price. Government determines price. Nah, government. Government. Government determines prices. What does that look like? That doesn't mean like you're saying, oh, you're just joking around. Am I joking around? This is an example of government determining price. Where are we at? I've got so many slides. Again, this is an example of government raising wages, determining price, demand, supply. Those determine prices. But no, the progressives believe throw the laws out. Throw the rules. I mean, these aren't these are not laws as in a man wrote them. These are laws in that they are uh, natural laws. They are natural phenomenon that exist among human beings that we have noticed. These are laws like gravity. These economic rules or laws are up there with gravity. This is just, we have noticed them, we have documented them, and they are now facts, scientific facts. Demand determines price. Supply determines price. You cannot rewrite gravity. We can't pretend that gravity doesn't exist. Can't do it. But yet, a lot of the progressives believe, nope, government's got to involve and raise my wages. Government's got to tell the businesses what to do. That's not the way it works. We should not do this. All right, let me give you a perfect example. Let me bring it home to you now. LeBron James, four years, $154 million. I do not care that he gets paid $154 million, nor should you care. It's not my problem. That is up to him and the Lakers. That's between LeBron James and the Lakers, not me. I am a third party. I shouldn't determine that. That's up to demand, which there is a high demand for excellent once-in-a-lifetime basketball players. That's why he gets paid. And guess what? There is a low supply of once-in-a-lifetime Hall of Fame basketball players. He gets paid this money because high demand and low supply dims the rules. I didn't make them up. These are just scientific facts that have existed since the beginning of mankind. When something is desired, it then is valuable. And when something is in very low supply, it also becomes valuable. And LeBron James, high demand, low supply, he's worth a lot of money. Deal with it. Now, if you want to complain, here's your chance to complain and want. Here is a 2006 ticket to the Lakers. And if you look close and blow it up, you probably can't tell. Well, it's $25. That was 2006, 13 years before LeBron shows up. Let's look at a ticket today from March 29th, 2019. It is ah, $223. Now, there's other economic principles at play but definitely one of the reasons why tickets cost so much is because the lakers are spending a bunch of money on lebron james and they've got to find a way to pay for that and one of the ways to pay for it is raise ticket prices to pay for him now if you're a progressive or you're a part of big government you say that's unfair to the fans they should get to see lebron james all right I'll listen to that argument, although it's stupid, but I'll listen to it. Let's play it out. Let's go at this at a scientific approach, okay? This is what we can do in social studies. We can play this out scientifically. We don't need to think about our desires. We don't want to think about, well, what we want.